What's up guys, it's Juicy with Juice Your Money. Back again with another video, we're opening up a Panini Prism Cello box, as well as two additional packs that the card shop hooked me up with. Um, we're going to talk more about centering today um, and how to identify whether or not the card that you do have is centered properly. Um, centering is a big thing when the card services are grading. Uh, PSA does it more on the eyeball test. And when they look at the card, if they see that it is off-centered visually, um, then when they look at it under a magnifying glass, it will show that it's off-centered even more. Um, and with the centering, that's where your grading does come down some. And so we really want to key in on the centering and make sure that we have the card centered before we send it in. Um, because the value of a PSA 9 is roughly about the same as a raw card that you're going to sell. And if you sell a raw card, uh, you'll get maybe $10 less than what you would a PSA 9. But you'll spend an extra $30 or $40. So we want to make sure you avoid those mistakes and not have to worry about, you know, whether it's going to be a 9 for sure or if you think that it has a chance to be a 10 to go into these specifics. Um, here's a, here's a John Morant card that is centered phenomenally. I think John Morant's that I just pulled right here can get a PSA 10. Um, BGS may give it a 9.5. Uh, they're a lot stricter on their grading because they go into the edges, the surfaces, the corners, and the centering. So um, BGS is a little bit more strict, but if you're in this card game and you know that uh, about the gradings, a BGS 10 is more sought after than a PSA 10. So you really want to make sure that you're getting a 10, whether it's from PSA or BGS. And the way you identify that is first looking at the card, making sure that the centering is good on it. Best way you can do that is take a ruler, flip it over to the centimeter side and measure on both sides if they're both identical. If they are, then that's one check mark that you could take off your list of, okay, this qualifies for a graded card. Next, take a mic, uh, magnifying glass or a loop, which I use as a jeweler's loop, and that's used to look into diamonds, um, and scan over the card. Make sure that there aren't any of those printer dents um, or dings or any fading of the color on the background as well, and that'll help as another check to let you know, hey, I need to get this card graded or I don't need to get it graded. So here we're just opening up some wax. Um, I did cut this video down. Did uh, I did speed up the parts where I didn't get too many hits. I don't want you to just sit there, watch a bunch of cards get opened. Um, when most of the people opening the Paninis are looking for the Zion and Jaw um, or LeBron James Silver or Giannis Silver. Um, so we're trying to just key in on the hits, talk a little bit about those, talk more about the centering, also the pricing. Um, with the pricing, a PSA 9 and a raw card are pretty identical in pricing. Um, now, the value is really when you get a PSA 10 or a BGS 9.5 or a 10. That's when your card value will skyrocket. So be on the lookout for cards that, are, that you're thinking of a player that may go up in value. Um, one of the guys that has skyrocketed recently um, before the NBA season shut down was Kobe White. Kobe White's rookie card was selling for about $5 a rookie card. Now they're selling for about $25 a rookie card. So if you're looking for an investment, um, Kobe White's one that is taking off a little bit more, but I'm not sure how the shutdown of the NBA due to the coronavirus will affect the future value of him because um, he was hot when he was playing. He was putting up good numbers for the Bulls, and we'll just have to see later down the road. I think with Kobe White though, I think you could be pretty certain that that $25 for that rookie card will hold. Um, I know a PSA 10 for that will shoot up about three times that for sure. So just be on the lookout for cards, especially if you're buying individuals that you are buying a 10 um, as the 10 will hold more value than a PSA 9 will. And 
make sure that when you're buying these cards that you're actually getting to look at them. Um, I know a lot of them get sold on eBay, but it is kind of tough to tell, um, especially with a picture that someone may have taken with the wrong angle. It'll make it a little bit more difficult to tell whether it is a good centered card or if it's not. So just be cautious of those things. And the way that I look at the cards as an investment is kind of like a stock. If I'm going to buy a company that's selling for $10 a share on the market, hoping it for it to go to $20 um, over time, that's the same thing, the same principle I use on cards. If I'm going to spend $1,000 on 100 shares of a $10 company, then I want to make sure that that company goes up. It's the same thing. Uh, with the cards, I want to buy them in bulk. I don't want to just buy one or two of them and sit on them. I'd rather buy 25 or 50 of them, sit on those, sell off the shares to get the money that I put back in, and then hold the rest for profit long term. Um, with the rookies, you really don't know who's going to take off after just one season. Because you can have a rookie whose rookie card is flying through the roof. Um, their rookie year, but then they have a catastrophic injury um, or they do something off the court issues wise and they're not able to play anymore um, and that will bring their value down. One prime example was Malik Monk. Malik Monk's rookie card was pretty cheap when it first came out and then it did go up in value after he hit a game winner. But then he did get uh, recently suspended by the NBA, so his card's not worth anything anymore. Uh, most of the people that bought him at his high probably lost money on that card. So just be on the lookout. Um, it's not all about what they do on the court. It's also about what they do off the court. So just be sure that if you're spending a good amount of money on a single card that it is a player that you believe will take off, uh, such as Giannis's card. Uh, that's how these rookie cards work. It's it's all about timing, and then also it's all about what price point you think is going to be their top dollar to sell it at to make a profit as a sports card investor. So here we got a Tyler Hero. Um, those were the three big hits from this pack. Um, up in the future, I will have a little challenge coming up. I'm doing one Robin Hood challenge if you're interested in trading options, going into the theta, the data, uh, theta delta, sorry, um, of how to determine which stocks are good to buy. And then also, um, I'll be going into a card shop with a couple of buddies and we're going to have a little fun with that as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, if you like this video and want to see more about it, want to learn more about how to make money on sports card investing and want to know where the market's at, um, click this, click the subscribe button and the like button as well. So I could produce more content and the more views we get, the more subscribers we get, the better boxes will open. Um, I'm looking to purchase a national treasures NBA. So I kind of want to open that on video for you guys as well. So uh, stay tuned for that, but don't forget to like, and subscribe the video. Thanks guys.